The rendering model in Angular is called the change detection. In this video, I'm going to explain you what this is all about. And I will also discuss the tools that we have available in order to tweak it to our needs. So I'm going to combine the on-push change detection strategy, for example, with the async pipe, a signal, and some other things. And I will also cover the local change detection, which has been introduced in Angular 17. My name is Rainer Hanekamp. I'm a Google Developer Expert, and I'm part of Angular Architects, where we provide workshops and consulting for Angular. So let's start. All right, so this is the application that we will use. We have here a list of holidays. And the important part is the last rendering. We see that it shows the time when it was more or less last updated or last rendered, which at the moment happens every second. And then at the very bottom, we have here a timer, which says when was the last updated update where I more or less requested the data. And if we take a look at our application, then we see, first of all, this is here a material table. Here we have the last rendering, which is calling a function, the now function, and the now function is more or less returning the current date. And we also have here our refresh function, which is triggered if the component initializes itself, so in the very beginning, and also if we click here on the refresh button. What this, do, what this does is that it more or less fetches some data from an API and it sets the data source, obviously. And what we also have is then here a last update. And the last update is set once the fetch has finished. So we see this here in the then of the promise. And the last update is passed on to my timer component, which is what we see here. And that one has an interval built in which runs every second and updates itself. So the problem now is, as I said, the, the last updated, that one, that should always be updated every second. This is something what I want, but I don't want that the list component is rendered all the time. So I only want that it renders if I'm getting some new data, but then it just stays as it is. So, the way how change detection in, by default works in Angular, that Angular says, I am waiting for somebody to trigger me, and then I'll go through all the components that I have, and then I verify if, for example, the value that the last update now has in my component, if it is the same value that I'm currently using in the template, the render value, and if not, then I'm going to re-render that part. So this is what we call the so-called change detection. And there has to be a trigger because we can't run the change detection all the time. And the trigger is a library which is called zone.js. And zone.js triggers the change detection when an asynchronous task ends or when an, a handled DOM event happens. So if I now, for example, say I want to optimize this part, then you might come up with the idea and say, well, the reason why this kind of rendering happens all the time or why the last rendering is updating all the time is because you're using a function. So we know in Angular, using a function inside of a template is not a good choice, but it isn't. Just, the, just if we use a function, that doesn't mean that the change detection is triggered. Again, the change detection is triggered by two criteria, a handle DOM event or an asynchronous task. So it will not help if I update here, if I say here, okay, it's not a function, but maybe I just uh, do something else. The real problem actually comes from my timer component to the right. Here is an interval. An interval is an asynchronous function. And if that one more or less executes every second, then it triggers the change detection. Which means if I'm going to disable now the interval and I go now back, and my application loads again, then we see that the last rendering stops, but unfortunately also uh, the last updated at the very bottom. Not really a satisfying solution. And now we will uh, take a look at one of the tools that are available to yeah, kind of tweak change detection to our needs. So you might already heard of the so-called change detection strategy on push 
This is something that you can enable in the component decorator. So you say here, change detection on push. And as you see, there are two of them. So there is a default and the on push. The default is the default. <laughs> and what changes now with the on push is that we still have the zone chest, which needs to trigger the change detection. But once the change detection hits or sees that it has to check a component with on push enabled, it stops and it says, well, I'm only going to check it and its children if it is marked as dirty. So somebody needs to mark this component as dirty. How does this happen? Well, there are again some criteria when a component is marked as dirty. We can mark it via a manual marking. So there is a, there is a, there is a function for that. We can have a handle DOM event. We can use the async pipe. We can have property binding where the input also updates and we can also use a signal at the moment nothing of them is there so if we take here a look what what what, what we are doing here we are kind of more or less refreshing so we are calling here this fetch and it's just setting values and nothing else it's an asynchronous task yes but an asynchronous task is not something which marks the component as dirty so what we could more or less expect here, if we now go back, that all of a sudden, the last rendering, the time does not update itself. The last update here stands with zero seconds, so it's not updated. And well, we have more or less frozen our component. It doesn't react to anything anymore. I said before, it could also be happen that the, that the mark for dirty happens manually. Because this is something which we have at the moment, maybe it's not obvious. But the question is, why do we actually see here something? So why do we see those holidays? Because if it would really be like, as I've explained it before, that first of all, the component is of course rendered initially, then the fetch starts, the fetch sets its values, but the component is not marked as dirty. So why do we see the holidays then? The thing is, in this case, I'm using Angular Material. And it could also be the case that a component that we use marks itself as dirty. Now with dirty marking, it always goes upwards. So not just the component, but also its parents are marked as dirty as well. And this is exactly what happens. The material table knows when we feed it with new data that it has to update itself. Or that it has to that it has to mark itself as dirty. We can make a, uh, um, an experiment uh, to show this. So let's just just say I'm kind of disabling the setting of the values there, and I come up here with uh, something new. So I say here I have some kind of a dummy value, and I just want to see what it shows. So I say here the dummy by default has the value foo, and once the asynchronous task has ended, I am going to set the dummy now to bar. Now, if I'm right, that would mean that foo is there, obviously, but because my asynchronous task, so that just the native fetch does not mark my component as dirty, we will never see the bar. Yeah. And that's what we have. So foo is there, but bar is missing. But of course, if we then say, okay, now we are updating the material table, then it could be the case. I mean, in this case, it is the case, but depending on the component, when it marks itself as dirty, that now the change detection goes into the list component and checks if it has to do um, a re-rendering. And this is exactly what happens right now. Yeah. So again, on push is quite powerful, but you have to be very careful what you're doing because you might end up with a situation where the re-rendering does not happen. So one of the criteria when a component gets marked as dirty is property binding. We have it here. So we have here our timer component. It has the last update. And this last update comes, of course, from the parent component. So the parent component passes on here the last update. And we have also the refresh button available. So the refresh button means I'm going to fetch something. And then I'm going to update the last update. I'm setting it to the current date. 
and then we should actually see a change because then somehow the course of the property binding that happens this component should be marked as dirty and it should just work what would we expect well actually if the fetch method here updates the, up the, the last update then the seconds would more or less should go down to zero because the last update in seconds says this is the last update when you clicked on the refresh button so it should immediately go back to zero. Let's try it out. So let's click here on refresh and it doesn't. It says 88 seconds. The time is correct. But if I click now again on refresh, it goes back to seven seconds. If I click multiple times on refresh, then it might even be zero seconds. Let's think it through. So we have here the click on the refresh button with a component marked as on push. That means the click on the refresh starts the asynchronous task. So this code here is not executed yet. But because it is already a click, the list component itself is marked as dirty. Which means when a change detection runs, which also happens of course here after the after the refresh, then it checks the least component, nothing has changed, but it also checks the timer component. Now the timer component is just then updating itself, showing the last update in seconds, which of course was still working or was still ref referring to the old last update. Good. So we have now an explanation why the time increased instead of going back to zero. The question though is, why, when after the fetch method, we are updating our last update, why did it not reset itself to zero? The reason is, asynchronous task here ends, we are setting the last update to new date, it goes to the timer component, the timer component says, okay, there was now a property binding, it marks itself and its parent as dirty, and then again, uh, the last update in seconds hasn't been updated yet because it's running in an interval. So it could be the case that, I don't know, in 500 milliseconds, the last update in seconds is also updated, but not now when the component is marked as dirty and when the change detection starts because the fetch has just ended. And that's why we still see there the old time and it doesn't go back to zero. That's the problem. And for that, we have a solution and that's just implements on changes. I'm going to remove this one here, which means if I now say, okay, I'm going to implement it. So I have here my ng on changes. And once that happens, I just go on and say, look, you also need to update the last update in seconds because that's what you have to do. And if we now click on the refresh button, then we could more or less expect that now the last update in seconds has the right value, namely zero. Click on it, wonderful. This is what we were hoping for. But with, we, 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 see, we, we see a short glimpse where there is another value there, and that's because we are having here actually two um, change detection cycles, one coming from the refresh and then one coming after the fetch is more or less done. Not optimal, but that's the explanation why you see some kind of flickering in there. There is one last thing that you really have to be aware of, and that's the and that's the, the, the requirement that the input changes happens immutable. So let's just say we have here last update, and this one is now a date of undefined. It's, it's actually an object literal, which has it. And then of course I need to make some further changes. So I have to say here value and here I also need to update the date. So I'm doing this now mutable. I'm not going to change the object reference. So I say here value is undefined. And then I also of course have to make some changes in my timer component because here it is also a value of date and undefined and I say, okay, then by default, you are undefined. 
we would have to come up here with a check. So I would say if this last update, if this is a value, then I only want to go through it. So I'm going to here with the return and then I can safely access the get time or the value. And I need to do the same thing here again. So as I said, this is now a mutable change. Mutable change is not good because mutable change doesn't mean that now the timer component is marked as dirty, which means we would could expect more or less the same behavior that we already had in the very first try, namely that the last update in seconds does not set it back self to zero because it's not marked as dirty here, but it is marked dirty after I click on the refresh, which happens before. So we'll see some seconds shown depending on the last time that I clicked on the refresh button. So I click here again and refresh. Yeah, 40 seconds. It doesn't go back to zero unless again, I click on it multiple times. So what's the solution to the problem? Well, you just have to make sure that this kind of last update is updated immutable, which means don't do it in place, but please generate a new object reference, set the value back to new date, and uh, that should be it. Now the input property binding works, it is marked as dirty, and when we then click again on refresh, then we will see that it jumps back to zero seconds. So if I click on it, yeah, we see it goes back. And again, I mean, if you wanna have a very performant application, then you might now say, okay, but what about this flickering effect that I have there? There's obviously some kind of change detection cycle in there, which I don't wanna have. How do we get rid of that one as well? So I don't want to see this flickering there. Well, this is something we can do if we mark the timer component as on push as well. So if I say here change detection on push, what does it mean? Again, refresh is marking list component as dirty. It is triggering also that change detection. But now it only renders or it only checks the list component and the timer component opts out. So the timer component says, well, nice for the parent, but I'm now my own push and I only update myself if the last update has a different value, which is not the case when refresh was running. It is only the case when fetch was more or less finished. So what we have now is a very performant timer component, which when we click on refresh should actually update itself, of course, back to zero, but we shouldn't see any flickering anymore. And we see it's gone, like the zero stays. So I have reverted back to the original version and I wanna show you now a different tool which allows us to mark a component as dirty. And that's the change detector ref, that's a service. So I can, in my timer component, I can say, hey, look, I want to have this kind of change detector ref. And now what we quite often see in code examples where this is used, that somebody says detect changes, which means we are now triggering after every interval the change detection on our own. Again, now we say it's not really necessary that the, that, that, that the change detection needs to say, well, it's on push, so I'm not going to check it. No, no, we are now calling the change detection manually. So it really happens. So we see an application the last update, the interval is working. Unfortunately, the time does not update itself. And the question is now, why, why that? I mean, how is this actually possible? Because, I mean, we're calling here detect changes, so the change detection runs. Well, the reason for that is that detect changes only runs for the current component and its children, but not about the other, not about the parents' components. They still have to be handled or checked by the default change detection, which is triggered by SoneJS. And since, of course, the change detection is still running, but it has the on push, so this component does have on push, well, there is no need, there is no need to update the time as well. So 
that the, 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 the best way or the, the way how you should actually do it in our case is that you don't say detect changes, but that you just mark this component here as dirty. So you have to say mark for check, not mark for dirty, it's called mark for check. And the mark for check also then goes to its parents and marks in this case the list component also as dirty, which means after this asynchronous task has ended and the change detection kicks in, triggered by a zone jazz, not by our marking for check, the list component is updated and also the timer component. And this is what we see. So in general, I mean, of course, we could now say, yeah, but uh, why is the time updated? The last rendering means something completely different. Wouldn't it be better to run detect changes then? Yes, uh, this was just for demonstration purposes. But if you really say you only want to run the check on the timer component and skip the list component because it is on push, then detect changes would be the better choice here. So now let's come to the so-called event handler DOM events. We've already seen that just by clicking on the button that some dirty marking happens. The thing is, it's not just about the DOM event. So the criteria is not that a DOM event is dispatched. You also have to have an event listener because otherwise it's not working. So let me add here to the timer component, let me add a button. Let's say that the mud raised button and it says here, um, update, for example. There is no event listener there. So if I now go back and I say, update, nothing happens. Not that time is updated and not the seconds are updated. Nothing. But if we add here now a click and I say, update, and I'm providing them the method, I don't actually have to do anything in this method. It's just important that there is an event listener there. Then this timer component is marked as dirty together with its list component and we will see an update. Yeah. So I click here on update and we see now it's working. And of course, because I'm not doing here the refresh, the seconds don't go back to zero. This is more or less the way how it should be. Would it now be a different thing if my timer component has change detection on push here as well? No, not really. It would be more or less the same behavior because it will still mark the list component as dirty as well. And since the dirty marking happens in the timer component, also the seconds are updated. So if I now go back and I say here update, yeah, we see what we actually could have expected. Now, let's take a look at the last but one, which is the async pipe. So let's say this last update in seconds actually comes from an observable. So I say here, I have an interval. This interval happens for every second. Then I have here a pipe with a map operator. And I say everything that you should do is that you more or less return the value there. And I don't need my set interval anymore. Interval. Of course, I have to change something here as well. So I have to see here, okay, this is now the async pipe. And now, if we take a look if it is actually working. So I click here, or I don't actually have to click on something. It's already working. It's updating all of it because what the async pipe is doing, something very similar to what the material table did before, internally, the async pipe is marking the component as dirty, and then, of course, this also goes on to the list component. So now let's come to the final part, which is the signal. So in Angular 16, a signal work like all the other tools that we have seen before. Once the signal was changed, it marked its component as dirty, and did the same for the parents as well. In Angular 17, that changed. That is a breaking change. That's also it's a, because it's a new major version, so that's allowed. But the signal now in version 17 has a local change detection. That means that the 
component where the signal changes still marks itself as dirty, but for the parent component that does not apply. What it does instead to the parent components that it get that they get a new a special marking, where when the change detection goes over them and checks if it actually has to do a check on them, that the parent component components say, well look, we are not dirty, but still that does not mean that you shouldn't check our children, go into the children. So skip us, but at least check if one of those children of mine, if they require a check. Yeah. And this is more or less what, what we achieve with 17. And the only thing that I have to do now is that I have to change the last update seconds in my timer component now to a signal. So I say here, okay, that's now a signal. So signal zero, and I don't need this observable anymore. I need the interval, of course. And here I have to say last update in seconds, change it. And if we go back, then we see that this is now really working as it should. So we have here our last rendering time that stays. So time stopped there. We have our last updated that updates every second. And this now means that the timer component is checked and the list component isn't, except it is of course marked as dirty which again would happen if I just click here on this refresh button. Then the time is of course also updated. Okay, so I hope you have now a better understanding what change detection actually is all about and how you can use it. In general, I am somebody who doesn't really like to apply on push by default, because as you have seen, it's a little bit dangerous. So you should only apply it if you really have the need for it. So if you have a performance problem. I would also like to say that in the future, we will get something which is called a signal component, which is a component type that works without Zone.js, where only the signals are more or less triggering the change detection. So this will become interesting. And if it's available, I'm sure you will find a video on my YouTube channel as well. Saying that, thank you very much for watching. If you have liked the video, please give it a like add your questions, your comments into the section below. And yeah, see you in the next video. Thank you again and goodbye.